Should old systems be forgot? End of the year, end of the year, yay! 2009's over, good riddance. I didn't really care for you, except for the games. Um, of course, when things have a nine, that means, oh no, it's the end of a decade. It's the end of a generation. Last time we dealt with this, it was like, oh, it's the end of a millennia. And we all got nostalgic for the plague and, you know, pogroms and like that. Um, uh, let's look back over only over the past 10 years. Uh, so I would have to say that the first 10 years of the 21st century in terms of how they apply to games uh, is, is a very good one. I think that where everyone kind of felt that everything was on the cusp of commercial success or commercial acceptance or popular acceptance for video games back in the 90s definitely became a reality. Um, there were numerous game franchises that suddenly entered the vernacular. You know, you had Halo, you had Grand Theft Auto, you have Modern Warfare here at the tail end, you have Gears of War, that uh, suddenly popular culture was being influenced by games and was being sort of am am amassed into it. That in and of itself, I think, does make this, I think, the most significant year, or excuse me, the most significant decade for gaming well, kind of since the 80s with the you know, rise of Nintendo and the clear permanence of the entertainment form that is known as video games, interactive entertainment. Um, we went through quite a few consoles <laughs> in this cycle as well. We you know, saw the Dreamcast enter and then die. We got the PS2. We saw Microsoft enter the fray. Then we saw Microsoft re-enter the fray. We saw Sony come back in for the third time. I mean, really, there were a lot of changes. And... Uh, um, it's amazing if you kind of look at how quick in the first half of the decade you saw these rapid advancements coming with gameplay types, coming with graphics. And then in the second half, things slowed down a little bit because everything had kind of reached that wonderful kind of boiling point. And it's like, okay, now let's work on a lot more of the artistry. And I think that's why I think in the long run, games of the second half of this decade are going to resonate with me longer. And I think we're going to see the influences of much longer, although there are some games in the first half. The one for personally just stands out for me is, is, is a game like Deus Ex, which uh, did create great ideas that are so very well executed for their time that then you can see them sort of influencing, say, a game like Elder Scrolls IV or Fallout 3. Um, it's really fascinating to sort of track the chart of it. I'm not going to attempt to do that because uh, I'll get professorial when I get a PhD. <laughs> But uh, it, it really was a, a, a wonderful decade for games, and I, I, I don't know if there's even, like, big highlights. I, I think the things that stand out for me are freezing my balls off in Palmdale, California, in a, in a, in a hangar, an airplane hangar, for the launch of the 360. And not so much uh, because it was the launch of the 360, but because... I think no many, so many nightmare scenarios took place. I don't, uh, it, was, it was a large corrugated roof. Uh, that, you know, that we were up on a, a, a big tower right under the roof and they had bands playing and people were screaming and there was loud music. And for the first time in my life, Morgan was standing right next to me and I never heard a single word she said. I had to kind of use the corner of my eye and when her lips stopped moving, that must mean that I had to talk. Um, that will definitely stand out. I, I, I think almost every single launch, the PS2 launch at the Metreon up there, just the fact that the first half of the decade involved me up in San Francisco and the second half involved me uh, down here in Los Angeles. It's, it's a little bit scary when you really sit down to look at where we began in the decade and, and sort of where we've ended up. Um, I, uh, it's very hard to imagine that in the next 10 years, we're going to see that dramatic a jump. Um, it's going to be very interesting. I, I've, I've been going over my head. Can I give any prognosis of where we're going to be? I, I, I don't think the, the, controllerless future is really going to happen for gaming at the end of the year. I just think the game, at the end of the decade, I just think the games are going to become so diverse that we're very interested, you know, we're very comfortable right now talking, let's talk about gaming, and that kind of encompasses this really big space of, of video games. I think that it's going to segment so that people are going to be engaging in some type of interactive entertainment, and that what I tend to talk about, which are the hardcore games, are going to have some type of new nomenclature, and that's what I'll be talking about. But there will be a realm of different types of casual and you know, sort of specific demographic design entertainment that's interactive, so that it won't even seem alien. You have to make a case about it anymore. It will be quite ubiquitous, pervasive, and hopefully a lot of fun.